So there's, there's not even a debate in the Western world. In the Western world, Oxford, Oxford, who writes your dictionary, they have a definition for the divine and they have a definition for humans. And even Oxford, you believe everything that the British taught you in school, you believe that's valid, right? So whatever whatever the Queen of England says, that's, that's law, right? It's the Queen's English. Okay, so Oxford is going to define divine and human. The divine can never be equal with the human, even in their definition. The divine can never be, so when they talk about equality, they know they lost. Because of their lifestyle. They want you to agree that you're fallen too. They know that they have devolved to a human state. And the third human is a divine rebuke of those who have fallen from grace. That's why the Oxford uses the, the term because God rebukes the fallen people that he would kill in the flood for disobedience and rebellion. Open rebellion, God sentenced and judged And he rewarded the divine who, what made them divine was they protected and guarded the original image that he gave them. They cherished the in original image because he created them in his divine image. What made the outcast worthy of death was that they disrespected and defiled the divine image that was given. And for that group, the creator of heaven and earth said, you humans have been sentenced. Then those same humans, when they put crowns back on their people and they told you that they're superior to you in their dictionary, they defined two words, divine and human. And the, re the place where they get it from is Genesis 6, where God separated the world between those two groups. The divine that he created in his image and those who rebelled against his image. And then he executed his sentence of judgment, sparing the divine in the ark and killing dead all humans. It's on the record, and that's why in Oxford Dictionary, they separate divine and human. But then in their constitution, when they want to be able to move to these lands, they say all men are created equal. They know that's a lie. They know that that's a lie. And they know that if you agree to that, it's then you brought yourself down to their fallen human being level. All right, let's let me take you to let me take you to your European dictionary. This is not my dictionary. This is this is your masters that you love. What what do you what do your masters say? Right here in front of you. Right here in front of you. Right here in front of you. Divinity is the state or quality of being divine. And there's also the study 
of theology is a doctor of divinity. So this is Oxford. This is the British crown telling you they are not in this category. This down here says definitions from the Oxford language. This is all of your public schools. This is your private schools. This is all of the schools in the West. They are in agreement that there is a category of divinity. And there are a group of individuals who study divinity and they're called the doctors of divinity. Right here, I know my father has a doctorate of divinity. So if there's divine, divine is not human. Divine is the losers. All men are created equal in the Constitution is the losers trying to hit a reset and be like, yo, we all are on the same level. No, we're not. You live a lifestyle of the fallen outcast rebels. The British came in red coats and they called themselves the Confederate rebels. Did they not? Did the British who wrote these definitions who wanted to enslave people on this continent and lost the war, who also wrote these terms. But in the Constitution, so that they could still try and come back to these lands and then they could try and come back and still financially masquerade like they superior. They said we're gonna have to we're gonna have to work with the books. If we can't physically beat them on the battlefield, we're gonna have to beat them. We're gonna have to beat them with the king's language. Well, that's your fault. Because the most high God gave a divine tongue to his children 2,000 years ago, did he not? So when you subjugate yourself and you accept rebels, language. When God gave you a tongue, he poured out his tongue. And it says when they went out of the room, they spoke and everybody who was there heard in their own native tongue. That's a divine. So if, if, if God gave a divine and, and we know what the language is, it's phonics. They used to teach phonics. The people of the what they call the Middle East back in the day, they were the Phoenicians. So yes, they yes they know that we have a language. They used to teach phonics in school back in the day. But the reason your children can't read, the reason your children are dumbed down, they don't teach phonics no more. They told you you ain't got a mother tongue. What is phonics? The language of the Phoenicians. Who are the Phoenicians? The sons of Noah. Noah had a son who built an ark and continued building the ark and controlled the global economy from the time of Noah until the time when Jesus came and they were called the Phoenicians. And the language called phonics is what the Phoenicians spoke. They didn't speak Latin like the Romans or the Greeks. They spoke their own native tongue. But the Greeks and the Romans, because they stole everything that they know from the Phoenicians. And so if they stole your identity, of course, they're going to tell you that you don't have a tongue. You don't have lands. You don't have history because there's a period of Hellenism where the Greeks erased the Phoenicians, Carthage, Carthaginians, the Assyrians. They erased all of the people who are superior to them from the record and then they claim their identities. But they they got enough sense to know that they can never claim divine. So they claim that they're humans, but they say we all are humans. And if you ain't smart enough to know that when the creator said, let us create Elohim, that means the divine in our image, after our likeness created he them. If you ain't got the sense enough, when you know you dealing with rebels 
to counter punch them in the mouth when they try and bring you down to your their level. All men are created equal. You lying, homie. This is their definition, divinity. Now I'm gonna go give you their definition of themselves. Humanity. And then what they what, what y'all don't understand is they like we ain't gonna stop rebelling. We just gonna we just gonna say y'all with us. So we're gonna give you, we're gonna rebel against God and we're gonna set up a whole separate priesthood called the Pope in the Vatican. And we all gonna bow down to the Pope who is the Antichrist, who has always been the Antichrist system. And we simply gonna say, y'all common just like us. And if you ain't got the sense to claim your heritage as divine and you let me call you commonwealth. Then you the fool. That's how they playing, y'all. That's exactly how they playing, y'all. Notice I'm saying y'all. Notice I'm saying y'all. Because we ain't fooled. I'm just trying to teach y'all how to stand up for your loved ones before it's too late. I'm just trying to give y'all the information that my, my parents gave their life to share with y'all. That y'all ain't listen. Now that your life on the line, maybe you'll listen now. Here's the definition of who they are. Common. So the British call themselves the Commonwealth. Go, go look at Great Britain. And they call themselves the Commonwealth. There is no wealth in being common. The only wealth is being divine and blessed. Being common and cursed, there's no blessing in it. Roman, common, cursed. RCC, Roman Catholic Church, Roman, common, cursed. Divine, dominion, dominate. Not RCC. Divine dominion dominate richest dad in Babylon. Common, occurring, occurring. Found or done often. Prevalent. Shared by, shared by many. Coming from nothing. <laughs> done by more than one. Common prostitute, Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots, shared by many. This is this is what the Western world. This is listen. They worship the fact that they prostitute their women. Their worship system is based off of the women and the children being chattel slaves. That in woven into their worship is. What are the what are the what are the hippies? The hippies had a com a commune where they all slept with each other. So when the children was born, because they all slept with each other all the time, they all raised the kids as all parents. They all slept with the kids too. They don't tell you that. It was one big orgy, so nobody in the commune could claim who was the parents. Because every night they all sleep with all of the women. So the women gets pregnant. Who the heck can say they the father of the child? So there's no fathers who are going to stand in defense when other men come into the room of the child to sleep with the child too. That's the European world. That's what goes on in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Superior. That's what goes on on 
<laughs> in your convents, in their convents, in their cathedrals, and their mosques and their churches. Shared by all. This day definitions. This day definitions of their family. Done often. Oh, we sleep with our children often. Oh, we sleep with our sons. We sleep with our moms often. Shared by, coming from. Then y'all got a nerve to watch people over here calling themselves president go and bow and kiss the ring and dress in black when they go in front of this bastard priest called the Pope. So every last person that you see bowing in front of the Pope, they a common human being. So far from divine, it ain't funny. Then they want to come back to the U.S. and act like they got authority to write laws that apply to individuals who have never defiled themselves, who maintain the divine image of the Most High God. The only, the only way that they stuff can apply to us is that they physically come and take control over you and your family and subjugate you and break your will and force you and that's what they're going to have to do to try and take the vine but the history record is clear that the common has never been able to break or rule over the divine as long as the divine stand remains separate a piece of land a piece A piece of meat for public sexual use. Common. A piece of meat. So when they prostitute y'all, when they got these underworld trafficking, it's because they said, we common and you've agreed that you common. A piece, <laughs> a, a piece of open meat <laughs> for public use, especially, <laughs> oh man, in the Christian church, common is a form of service used for each group <laughs> or occasion. They specifically, they specifically included your common worship of idolatry. They went out of their way to make sure that they let you know your worship is common, yo, because you acknowledge our Pope. You acknowledge our you acknowledge our pastors and our preachers that are false prophets. You're not divine. And you agree with your lifestyle. You agree when they punch and you don't punch back. A fight is supposed to go two ways. Oh, when I get in the ring, I expect you to throw a punch, but you better believe I'm going to throw more punches than you punch. You better believe that I'm a land way more than you land. It ain't nobody that's ever going to get in the ring and outwork me in the ring. Never. You may throw a punch. But I'm going to throw 20. So who going to win? Just because they made a statement that all men are created equal, just because they said that the U.S. Constitution is the ruling document of this land, that's a punch. They waiting for you to punch back. So what's humanism? So they don't define divine. Now watch what they say what humanism is. So remember, they call you a human being. Their president, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, sent his wife to the United Nations. They created a unified, so the world, the world is unified in saying we are trading human beings. So what is the definition of humanism? It is a outlook. So that means a philosophy. 
So if somebody could come up with an idea to brand or define you, do you have to accept the idea of the very British English who wanted to enslave you? What sense does that make to, to embrace their philosophy when these are the same people that said you're subhuman, you're three fifths of a human being? Why would you accept their definition of anything when these are the ones that killed to leave you in slavery? Humanism is an outlook or a system of thought attaching prime importance to human rather than divine. This is their own words. Once again, definitions from the Oxford language. This is the English. This is the British crown who are Germans. So they are saying there's two groups on earth. There's the human and there's divine. And then humanism is we're choosing to focus on the human because we can't be divine. <laughs> An outlook or a system of thought attaching prime importance to human rather than divine or supernatural matters or no, rather than divine or supernatural matters. So they already defined in humanism that divine issues are supernatural issues. The power is in the divine. This is their own definition. So they have a philosophy that they put more importance on human matters rather than divine supernatural matters. They're telling you once again, this is the definition of Oxford language that Europeans have put in a philosophy and a system to enforce that and teach that philosophy that attaches the supreme importance to human unnatural matters rather than divine supernatural matters. That's what a human being is. That's what a US citizen is. A US citizen is a person that has been ignorantly dumbed down to human unnatural matters rather than divine supernatural beings. A human is a human unnatural being that the Germans said, we're just going to put our importance on human unnatural beings instead of the divine supernatural beings. Why would they do that? Because God told the whole world In 1260 years, from 538 to 1798, I will crush the rebel Greeks and Romans to prove that I have divinity against their rebellion. And he used his divine children on earth to do the crushing. So the people who crushed the Greeks and the Romans in France in, in the Vatican, in Italy, all throughout Europe, they are the divine children of God on earth. And so after God said it and it was done, the history record is so obvious that the Europeans said, okay, now we got to create a brand new school of thought that doesn't remind people about divinity. We need to, after 1798, create a whole new system, a whole new philosophy, whole new theology, whole new world outlook based on humans rather than divine because we challenged the divine and lost. So now if we create a new humanism, 
And if the world is ignorant enough to follow us in a system that we created and lead the system that God created, then we will enslave them. And they put, they, this is on record. They're telling you. Humanist beliefs stress the potential value and goodness of human beings. There is no goodness in human beings at all. There can never be, there can never, when God talks about redemption, he ain't talking about humans. The humans did not get redeemed. The humans, every human died in the flood. That's why they use that term. There's no redeeming humans. God came to Cain and offered him redemption and he compounded his violations of God's covenant and became the lawless humans that God drowned in the flood. The word human and lawlessness goes together. You can't separate lawlessness. Humans are lawless. When the word of God talks about the lost, it's talking about the divine beings that have gotten deceived and are off course. That's the lost, the divine who are off course. Because when Cain was born divine, offered the wrong worship system, God physically came to him and offered him an opportunity to get him back on course. And he said no, and he compounded it with blood and killed his brother and said, am I my brother's keeper? I, I am a lawless human and I will give birth to a race of lawless human beings. And then God said, I, I regret the, that I didn't kill him dead and I gave him an opportunity to train up children to rebel against me called lawless human beings. And if you want to see where that came out of God's mouth specifically, I will take you to it after I read this. The whole age of enlightenment in Europe is this philosophy called humanism. The whole age of enlightenment, they call it the age of reason. And then God sat back and said, okay, you're creating an educational system. Let me see what happens. And you know what happened? The dark ages. You know what happened? The same thing that happened to Rome. Europe crumbled. Humanist beliefs stress the potential value and goodness of human beings emphasize common human needs there is no human need the only thing that the human desires is blood bloodshed Cain said am I my brother's keeper that is a human and seek solely rational ways of solving human problems Jay-Z had 99 problems right and Beyonce is number one because she represents the divine model so Jay-Z's number one problem is Beyonce and the seed that she brought forth in the image of the divine creator. Those children don't represent him. No more than Jesus represented Joseph. Jesus did not represent Joseph. Jesus represented Mary. Jesus ain't had nothing to do with Joseph. That's why when he tried to tell him to go to work, he said, I must be about my father's business. You ain't my daddy. And the only way you get embraced by me is if you husbands love my mama the way I love my bride, the Holy Spirit. I simply came into your life to teach. You lost clowns how not to become lawless humans and all Israel became lawless humans anyway a renaissance cultural movement 
which turned away from <laughs> medieval biblical truth and revived interest in the ancient Greek and Roman thought. Humanism is a renaissance and a cultural movement. So when y'all talk about culture, culture comes from humanism. Only human beings have culture. The divine have a heritage. God said, I will feed you with a heritage. The divine have a heritage. The lawless humans have culture. I'm black and I'm proud, black culture. You're a lawless human that's been deceived. You can, you can come home. No, you're a divine lost. When you compound being lost by the doing the actions of the philosophy of the Greeks and Romans, which is shed the blood, that's when you become lawless. So when you just believe they are, ideologies and when you just bounce to and from every woman doctrine God still got a group of individuals that he wants to come and rescue you he calls you lost you are the divine lost but when you start living the lifestyle they're telling you that their philosophy of humanism is based in ancient Greek and Roman thought Rome is dead Greece is dead. The Greeks and the Romans have never, they have been clowns in every period of history. There ain't a Greek or a Roman that has ever been able to lead in any way, shape, or form on earth. The only people who followed the Greeks and Romans were slaves who'd been enslaved their whole life called the children of Israel. They were slaves in Israel. They were slaves in Babylon. They were slaves in Canaan. They were slaves. They were slaves. Abraham was a slave in Ur the Chaldean. Abraham, slave. The Hebrew, slave. Slave in Egypt, slave, slave. The only people who looked up to the Greeks are the Hebrew slaves. All of the other nations, kindreds, tongue, and people of the world, God calls divine. And they have never, we have never followed Greeks and Romans. We will never follow Greeks and Romans. So y'all keep rolling out a Roman Catholic Pope and Barack Obama bow down to him. That means Barack Obama is a lawless human. Joe Biden bows down to him. So Joe Biden has, has no has no bearing, no say, no input, no anything on the United States of America. They're trying to get you to believe that the Constitution gives you your rights when you have a divine birthright. But you can't have both. No man can serve two masters. Are we the USA? Yes. It doesn't mean United States of America. It means the union, the marriage union of Salem's angels. The marriage union, Adam and Eve, the two became one. The U stands for the union. Adam called his wife the mother of the living. If you're the divine living, you are the seed of the union of the Salem angels. Who are the Salem? Who is, what is Salem? Salem is the kingdom of heaven and earth. Salem is the root word of Jerusalem. When, when heaven came down to tax Abraham, God saved Abraham from slavery. So God said, any wealth that you touch belongs to Salem. And he came to Abraham and Abraham paid him a tenth when Abraham killed the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah and took his nephew and took all of the possessions, then God came down from heaven to earth and presented himself 
as the king of Salem, the king of righteousness, the high priest after the order of Michael and his angels. Michael is the archangel of Salem, the son of God, the creator of heaven and earth. The king of Salem is Michael, the archangel. The union of Salem's angels, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels and cast them out. So fallen angels tempt humans to be fallen from divine grace and be lawless human beings. That's what the fallen angels who lost to Michael and his angels. So the USA stands for the union of Salem's angels. Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels and cast them out. So the term fallen angels comes from Satan and his angels devolving from heaven and landing on earth. Then when God created his children in his likeness, the divine, are the fallen angels, even the fallen angels, is Satan and his fallen angels on the level of God's children who he created in his image? No. God's children are superior to Satan and his angels. So then when people fall from the divine, like Satan fell from the divine in heaven, when people on earth fall and become human beings, can they be equal with the individuals that have not fallen? Can, can it, lawless human beings from Germany and Spain and Portugal and the Dutch and, and the French and all of the Europeans who are fallen followers of the Roman Caesar, the popes, all of those European nations followed the popes for thousands of years. So that is fault. That is the definition of fallen. So. Can any nation from Europe come over here to the United States where we have never bowed down to them fallen fake leaders called popes? And when they write a constitution, can they say all men are created equal? They telling you themselves, they don't even believe that. What they said is we not, we not going to use that term divine no more. We just going to focus on human. It's a renaissance of cult, a cultural movement was turned away from the medieval scholarship and revived a interest in ancient Greek and Roman thought. So let me show you fallen humans. Then I'm going to show you divine. Let me show you fallen human. Then I'm going to show you divine. Over here is Jay-Z. This is Becky with this good hair. Over here is Jay-Z. This is Becky with the good hair. Over here is Kanye. He's the son. Over here is Jay-Z. This is Becky with the good hair. Sleeping with the Kardashians. And this is Kanye, his son. And just like Jay-Z pimps out. All of the Kardashians. The Kardashians pimp out spineless black men. The Kardashian, this is, this is, a, this is a humiliation ritual. So he humiliates the Kardashians, the mama, the sit, all of them. And then they all go get with black rap niggas. And then she turned Kanye out to the same people who Jay-Z had to sleep with to be called King of New York. Remember, he wants to be called Sir like Paul McCartney. So he is willing to sleep. Let Paul McCartney sleep with him so that he could be called Sir King of New York. And then Paul McCartney like, all you got to do is destroy women and men. And the men got to be lower than the women. 
It's called unnatural humanism, transhumanism. Said we're going to go away from the divine model and we're going to do the opposite. So Kanye, so Jay-Z said, oh, it, it, in order for me to be sir, all I got to do is be the recruiter and the pimp turning out individuals to be unnatural. Paul McCartney and Elton John and, and Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Harry and Prince Charles, they all say, yep, that's, that's all you need to do for us to call you a sir. Understand, this is the British Empire's emblem. The unholy Roman Catholic Church. This is the German, this is in Germany. The father of Germany, this is the father of Germany. So when the U.S. said the one drop rule, this is the father of Germany. That's why Jay-Z looks up to the Europeans and will sacrifice you because the individuals who founded Aryan white supremacy, which says we'll take a small group of 5% of y'all and we'll let y'all rule over the 95% of the masses. That's what Judas wanted. I want to take a cut of the rulership. So what if my people enslaved? So what I got to pimp myself and prostitute myself out? If you let me be in the 5% nation, I'll do the unnatural. I'll be the recruiter. This is humans. Humans in church. Remember, they church started a church service. This is humans. Tr humanism. They, the, they already define what humanism means. We going away from the divine and the supernatural. And we focus on the human and the unnatural. That's what the Oxford Dictionary. That's what the British said. Okay. So if that's the div if that's the unnatural, what's the divine? If Jay-Z, Kim Kardashian, and Kanye is the unnatural, rap niggas, if that's the rap industry, what's the divine? If that's Hollywood, Where's Hollywood? If that's the unholy grail, where's the Hollywood grail? Glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Let me show you the divine. Hip hop image. Oh God. Do what? Break the cycle. Do what? We gonna break the cycle. Break the cycle of what? Of our people going from lost, divine lost sheep to lawless human goats, sacrificial goats. We trying to prevent, and how do we prevent that? We restore the divine lost to the divine found. Lost and found, restoration, rehabilitation, transfiguration.
That's called the divine lost. The divine lost who need an abundant life insurance policy. That guarantees that we will not allow our brothers and sisters to devolve further into lawless, unnatural human beings. The divine, supernatural, Beings created in the image of God. Can you be lost? Yes. Thirty years ago, I was going around the country. 1992, 1993. Thirty years ago, almost. Recruiting in inner cities with a drama group to go into the inner cities, stay in the houses of the individuals who brought us into their inner cities. Their kids is going to public schools and high schools in Detroit, in Michigan, in Newark, in Philly. We went all around the country taking the invitation Yo, I'm here to be your security, your divine security. We call that abundant life lock. Your special forces, divine security. We will fight and die for the divine image of everybody who invests in this abundant life insurance policy, who contributes who dedicates their children up and gets an abundant life insurance policy for them too, who goes out and get follows the blueprint and gets husbands, get one wife, wives who get a husband, dedicate yourself to the blueprint, get abundant life on your spouse. Abundant life insurance policy comes with the abundant life lock security forces. 160% money back guarantee, security forces, abundant life lock, special security, supernatural security forces. Barack Obama, we've been selling abundant life insurance policies for 30 plus years. So then when my children were of age to be able to go and do exactly what my wife and I was doing, what do we do? We brought the very same drama club and E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher to my son and my daughter prior to them going off to high school. And what did they do? They enlisted. Our system works to a T. They enlisted. They is all in. Just like us, they went all around the country selling the abundant life insurance policy. Our, our problem is the institutions won't help sell a policy so now we going we going to the public we bypassing these dead institutions we bypassing these these leaders that want all of the grace and mercy for themselves and they don't want none of their brothers and sisters to have access to the grace of mercy that's who these people are So he's telling you that the same abundant life insurance policies that we've been selling for 30 years change lives. He is telling you that he is the product of when Kagia Kamati Scott and my sister Terry Lynn Leggett and, and 
Cheryl Richardson and Sheila Richardson and Zakiba Watkins and Sean Payne, Thaddeus Prevet. June, Freddie, all of my, Maisha Parker, Eddie Cromwell, when the crew of phase one took this abundant life insurance policy, his mother didn't have the opportunity to close the gap and come get the abundant life policy. Somebody got to go into the highways and the byways and he said he has changed the world with the same inspiration that Seven Day Adventists hog up and hoard to themselves, gorge themselves on, and won't give to our people. They don't do marriage in this family. I told you the abundant life insurance policy has the stipulations that you must follow the blueprint for the policy to be effective and not to be null and void. If you violate the principles of the covenant of God, the abundant life policy is worthless and the investment that you tried to make is null and void. The abundant life, the bedrock of the abundant life is the marriage. He said they don't do marriage in my covenant in my family but when they brought the abundant life insurance policy the model and when i went to oakwood oakwood changed my mind and changed my life and then i saw the policy myself and i've been taking an abundant life insurance policy all throughout the world changing lives all throughout the world the divine Do you know where we took those children the very next day? Right to the hood called Paramore. If you ask the institution, Pine Forge Academy, you ask Joe Johnson and them, had they ever came? When, when you spend your money, when you are spending money, you control the agenda. When you make the investment, you decide. How many thousands of churches in the 30 years that phase one in creative arts has been around have paid money to bring Pine Forge Academy with the choir and phase one to their church and have not given our people access? It's blood on your hands. It's blood on your heads. Every seventh day of this church that has ever when Eric Thomas is a product of when you expose people who might not have direct access to the abundant life insurance policy, when you bring the policy to them, they will sign up for the policy. They will make the investment. They will make whatever sacrifice they need to secure the abundant life insurance policy. The problem is y'all want to watch creative arts in phase one year after year after year. Y'all want y'all children in your AY to watch phase one. Y'all want y'all children in y'all stinking little school to watch AY, to watch Pine Forge year after year. How many times your children need to watch and and they 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 the worst children in the city. Your children watching Pine Forge, and they the worst they the worst children in the neighborhood. That's what happens when you rob God. When the children of Israel tried to hoard manna, 
it rotted on them. Go back and look to when they was in the desert. God said, only take, only take what you need to feed your, set, your family in a 24-hour period. Some of them tried to hoard the bread of life. And because it was not following the command, even though it was the same bread, it rotted. When you get no results from the everlasting gospel, it's not the gospel, it's you. You ain't following the command. So even though you got access to gospel, it's going to rot on you. That's what, that's why he did that to Israel. Cause he knew people all throughout the ages want to get to the kingdom, but they don't want to get other people to the kingdom. They don't want to do the good Samaritan service to get other people to the kingdom first. God say you, before you get to the kingdom, you got to put 1600 people in the kingdom. Feed the 5,000. Before you could eat, you ha they had to feed 5,000 people before they was able to put one morsel of bread in their mouth. Not y'all. Y'all claim y'all got the truth. Y'all been in the same spot for 30 years, eating so-called truth. And listen, the disciples had to feed 5,000 and then 4,000. You ain't never fed nobody but the same church members that claim that they got the same truth. You ain't, you don't never ever engage with nobody else but the same niggas that's under the same curse that you under. This is the divine. See, there was an exchange in the garden. This is the divine. There was an exchange in the garden when the very first marital art of war. That's my queen and myself on the right, and Nas and Beyonce on the left. Me and my queen on the right. A bond that could not be broken. A desire in the sun to be complete. Adam walked with God in the garden and saw the wealth of the world, saw the gold, saw the silver, saw the diamonds, and said, I'm not complete. He saw land for miles and miles that he could build on and make castles and set up banks. And he said, I'm not complete. His father said, close your eyes, son, go to sleep. But when he woke up, he had taken a rib and he had given him his crown jewel of creation. And when Adam opened his eyes, he said, you had me at hello. Restoration. Restoration for all of those y'all who have been abused. For all of y'all who have been lied to and misused. For all of y'all who have been abandoned and left for dead, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Restoration, flesh and blood. Restoration, bone and marrow. Restoration, first fruit blessing men. Restoration, birthright blessing women. Children, first fruit blessing, birthright blessing. Restoration, ray of light, resource. Community. Development center. Here to develop. That means build. You will rebuild the old waste places. It's time to take a fast from wasting your life. It's time to take a fast from wasting your talents. You have me at hello. Ray of light. You have me at hello. Trading places. Restoration. Restoration.
So divine, let me let me let me let me define what the divine is for you. So the divine, the divine is the separation that ET just ET just threw down the gauntlet. He ain't just throw down the gauntlet. I threw the gauntlet down. I put the money down to do exactly what ET verbalized. To take the entity that we physically created. We the students created creative arts. We the students. Along with guidance from the faculty. We used our life experiences. Just like E.T. used his life experiences coming from the streets. Coming to Oakwood. We used our life experiences to create the very play called Abundant Life. And they ain't willing to go to the highways and the byways where I come from. They ain't willing to go back to the rest of my thousand cousins and get the rest of the E.T., the hip hop preachers sitting on the corners of Trenton. They ain't willing to go get the millions and millions of E.T.s and D.D.s out of the heart of Chicago. They sitting back watching. This is humans. This is what humans do. They watch bloodshed. Humans are selfish. Am I my brother's keeper? God said, present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, divine, ain't human. 2003, 2006, we put that challenge down. 2009, I put the money down. Took them to the hood. That school could have been. Had that school should be filling, Pine Forge and Oakwood should be filling over to the brim. They going in the opposite direction. It's half the amount of students in the dorm now that it was in 1993. Of course it is, because it's humans up there. Ain't no more divine. The reason that this is a challenge right now is because Pope Francis came out and said, when you say what E.T. just said publicly, Pope Francis said E.T. is a terrorist. He said, anybody that tries to recruit 
the lost. Tries to bring truth to the lost and baptize the lost. He calls that fund fundamentalism. The Pope in the Vatican is threatening every, every man of God that I know that has given their life. There is a Pope in the Vatican and then you got presidents and governors and mayors and senators who bow to him and have pledged their allegiance to them. Every single one of you people The Pope has said anybody who. My father is a minister who dedicated his life to going and giving the everlasting gospel to the lost. The Pope has declared war on E.T., on Frank Leggett, and the Allegheny East Conference, and Oakwood, and Buddy Berg, and and Leslie Pollard, they go up and they bow down to Donald Trump. If they bow down to Donald Trump, they bow down to the Pope. They are at war with E.T. E you got to watch your back, homie. Frank E. Leggett. You have to watch your back, homie. Nobody gets a pass. When he says threats from the Vatican, understand he is saying them to the United States of America because this is the only place that he doesn't control. And everybody has to prove their allegiance. If some Roman Caesar antichrist wants to worship the sun gods, and build the image to the beast. And if people in the United States want to unify church and state and worship the image that he and erect that image and give breath back to that image, you got to do it over your own spiritual dead body, but you're going to do it away from the members of my family that are going to go and seek and save the lost and, and rescue we don't care what term he puts on it. We don't care if he put a death penalty on it. We don't care what he said. Because he is already dead. The deadly wound was Rome. He's impersonating like he has authority. It's, it's just like any other bully on any other playground. If you let them fool you to believe that they got authority to beat you up, he going to beat you up. To the men of God who go everywhere to give truth to people so that they can break the cycle and come out of darkness into the light. You have been threatened at the highest levels and the United States of America is openly at war with you. If you are a man of God trying to give truth to the dying so that they won't be in darkness, I am telling you, Joe Biden, later on I'm going to come back and show you the clips of the Pope making his statement about fundamentalism, about people evangelizing, about people, he calls it proselytizing. Meaning, yo, I done deceived Roman Catholics. I done deceived Muslims. I done deceived the people of Israel. Y'all people from the United States of America. It is a criminal act against the beast system for you to come and give the truth to the individuals that we deceived. And the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. Ted Wilson, the, the leader, he meets with Pope Francis on the regular. So Ted Fritz, Ted Wilson and Genome Diop, 
Janome Diop is the religious liberty director for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The religious liberty is that the Roman Catholic is saying their Catholics are free, should be free to worship the idols that they taught them to worship. And you should not bring truth to those that they have deceived. Religious liberty, Janome Diop is pushing that the people that the Catholic Church has deceived, they have a right to deceive anybody and you should not bring them truth as a Seventh-day Adventist. And the Pope has called you a terrorist when you bring truth to the people in darkness and Janome Diop and Ted Wilson under the ecumenical movement stand with the Pope against every man of God and so now we and the children that y'all have told that you are leading them to the kingdom, we are sitting back watching which of you men of God are going to bow down like cowards, are going to remain firm. We and the children that we have co-signed that you are a man of God. We all eyes are on you to see if with the Pope and with the Seventh-day Adventist Church being his prostitute and whore, his number one prostitute and whore, will you stand for the King of Kings or will you stand with an empty ritual because of a name that don't mean nothing? You being tested. The divine... Or are you human? Are you divine or are you human? Are you men of God? And I, I see many of y'all that we call men of God using that word human. I'm going to take you to the word of God. So remember, he that knoweth to do good and doth not do it to him it is sin. So before today, before this conversation, let's say you didn't know. Let's say you didn't know. After today, you men of God, understand if you keep claiming that you're a human being, the very individuals that have already labeled you a terrorist already have a, a, labeled you an enemy of the beast system when you say you're a human you're saying you're a person who is outside of the ark of safety you can't be divine and human you ready to all of my men of god let us create elohim the divine in our image, after our likeness, created he them, male and female. So there is a male and a female divine image of God. Let us create Elohim in our image. Elohim is the divine. The divine image of the most high God has nothing to do with humans. Nothing. This is so you can never, so you never ever use that term again. Do you have human rights? Do you have civil rights? No, you have a divine birthright. And if you don't know what a, your divine birthright is or how to claim it, that's why you need to study with us. That's why you need to run with us. That's why you need to train with us. You need to train up your children with us. That's why we do what we do. There's no excuse for you to settle for human rights because you don't got the knowledge. He said knowledge will increase, so increase your knowledge. Genesis 1. When humans began, when human beings began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Genesis 6, 1. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born unto them. 
So before six comes what? Four and five, right? Come on, yo. Come on. I got a one-year-old nephew. This is this is infant spiritual knowledge that everybody should have had who has ever been to Sabbath school or Sunday school. This is infant. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth, why is that sentence important? Because God showed who had the divine birthright and who was fallen humans by who could have children and whose seed was multiple fruitful and multiplying and who couldn't so after Cain killed Abel God didn't take his life Cain took a wife and Cain's children were unfruitful the humans were unfruitful Genesis 4 is the text of the line of Cain of the unfruitful human beings then Genesis 5 is the text of the divine, fruitful, and multiplying seed of Adam and Eve that had dominion. Divine and human. It's laid out. Genesis 4 is lawless, human, unnatural, lawless human beings who could not have children, one at a time, all through Genesis 4. Every son of Cain had one child, one child, one child. Adam and Eve, it says, had many, many, many sons and daughters. The divine, Genesis 5. Humans, Genesis 6. Why were was Cain human? Because God tried three times to get him. to come back from being lost and to upgrade him back into being divine. And he, every time at the altar with the worship, he gave the wrong altar. God told him, do not put any, any fashion, any stone or any graven image. And he went and built a whole city in rebellion to God. And then he killed his brother. Three strikes, you're out. Human beings, our lawless seed of Cain and the serpent Satan. This is biblical. This is biblical. Don't care about how you feel. Don't care about what you think. Don't care about what you didn't know. This is, this is why. They call you humans, and this is why they say all men are created equal. This is why they say the U.S. Constitution, because the U.S. Constitution is the thing that brings you down to the, the German, the lost, lawless Germans level. Without the U.S. Constitution, the world is separated by divine and human. Without the U.S. Constitution, that's why they love the U.S. Constitution. That's why they love D.C. That's why they call the U.S. the superpower because it is the only place after 1798 where you ignorantly put yourself back down on a level. When God intervened divinely on your behalf. And you put yourself back in slavery. And it's right here in the word that you claim you stand on. When human beings began to increase. So after Genesis 5, God stopped limiting Cain's line. Adam and Eve had died. God stopped limiting Cain's line. And Cain's line began to have multiple, multiple children. Because Cain's children did something. They compounded the curse like the daddy did. He has a son named Lamech that went and killed two men and took their wives. The very first introduction of the satanic polygamous 
arranged marriage system. So when you hear them say arranged marriage, it comes from the satanic line of Cain. Any of y'all arranging marriages, when the Europeans arranged marriages, the King of France arranged marriage for the, the, it had nothing to do with the love that Adam had for Eve when God had to create a help me to complete Adam. It had nothing to do with that. It had to do with unnatural trade agreements. God said, that's a waste of my image. He called people who you do those arranged marriages. This dude killed two men so he could take his day wives. And instead of having one wife like Adam, he could have a menage a trois and an orgy. That's, that's, that's all men who have engaged in polygamy, multiple marriages, have engaged in the the satanic, sexual, human being, lawless practices. But some men did it as the divine lost, Abraham. That's why he said, I'll change your name and graft you into me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Abraham, now walk before me and be blameless. You are the divine and you're lost. David, divine, lost. Solomon, divine lost. So when all of these religions of the world, they say, oh, Abraham had multiple wives. Okay. Now you're lawless. Because God called them out of that trash. God called them. Back to the perfect standard, which was Noah. Noah. When human beings began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them. (laughs) So once again, in Genesis four, in the whole line of Cain, because they were so such animals, because human beings are such animals. God didn't allow any daughters to be born to them. Go and look at Genesis four, y'all. And women, you choose, you choose to be Babylonian harlots. When God, from the beginning of time to now, has said, the apple of my eye is the woman. And if you won't love her like I love her, you don't deserve her and you don't get access to her. And then you put yourself in reach of Satan and you chase after that lifestyle. Yo, that's a choice that you get to make. But you can't elevate those bastard satanic desires. They are not rooted in God. When humans began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, to the human beings. The human beings have a name in the word of God. It's called sons of Belial. The divine beings have a name in the word of God. It's called sons of God. (laughs) It's right here. It's right here. The sons of God saw the daughters of Belial that they were fair and went to marry as many of them as they chose. So for the first time, the divine sons became the divine lost in this generation after Adam and Eve died because now they're engaging in polygamous marriages with multiple wives And for the first time in the word of God, God speaks about skin color. It says they visibly saw the daughters of Belial, the daughters of the humans, that they were fair. Now, they tried to teach my dad when they I'm talking about Germans teach theology. The French teach theology. Hebrew and Greek is taught in theology. Those are Latin languages. So the pig Latins, the British, the French, the Germans, and the, they told 
my father and all pastors, that when you read fair in Genesis six, that is the first time that God calls women on earth beautiful. Now just think about that ignorant statement. Think about, think this is 2000 years into earth's history. Eve was created 2000 years prior and Germans have taught in black Seventh Day Adventist universities, Oakwood Andrews University, they have taught that when they come across this Hebrew word for fair, that it means beautiful. So what does that mean about Eve? If the women of the humans are beautiful, this is the Europeans teaching our fathers Aryan white supremacy to say that their white women are beautiful than the black queen Eve. And they don't, they, they so ignorant that debt, my father's generation, they so programmed with field nigga white supremacy that they missed it. They go down to Oakwood and they talk about Oakwood as an to Listen, they teach them white supremacy from the word of God and they don't even realize it because they don't have no source or identity about their roots of where they come from. They give a pass just because some white people claim that they're Christians and they seven day Adventist Christian. So they never ever question no white seven day Adventist Christian that taught. They would never ever teach us white supremacy. See, that's what happens when you do disobedient. God said, test the fruits of the spirit. Every, every person, every person walking by their fruit, you shall know them. He ain't say by the name of their denomination. That's what happens when you disobedient. You lead your whole family to put their faith and trust in niggas that are wolves in sheep's clothing. That's what happens. Because when they practice in white supremacy like they've been practicing for all of these years, Oh, they slaughtering our people. The sons of God saw the daughters of Belial, that they were fair. In Genesis 6, 2, the word says fair. But then when they translated, they translated into beautiful. Fair means light because God marked Cain and stripped melanin and melatonin from his skin. He used to be dark like his parents. And then... When he said, when my brothers find me, they will kill me. God said, not so in Genesis 4. And it says he marked Cain from head to toe. And the first person who was fair skinned, he didn't mark him with beauty. He marked him with a disease called leprosy. The first disease ever introduced to man was leprosy. And when you cut yourself deep enough, you go down to what? Meat, the white meat, right? All leprosy is the expulsion, the exposure of the skin below the surface that has no melanin and melatonin, which is the protecting coat, the protective coating the disease of leprosy, there's clean leprosy and unclean leprosy. If the flesh is called flesh, the white meat is called flesh. The protective coating that has melanin and melatonin, can an Ethiopian change its skin? That's called onyx, kush, melanin and melatonin is onyx kush ethiopian skin and all god did was remove the outer skin and expose the white flesh that wasn't beautiful hello when the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were fair they took as many of them 
as they could. It says, here it is, Genesis 3. I'm at Genesis 6, 3. Then the Lord said, when he saw that the humans, sons of Cain, had led the divine sons of Adam and Eve to follow after the humans instead of follow their father and mother's script, immediately when God saw the divine following the lawless, he made this statement. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not will not strive. Remember, he said, run the race. He said, when humans run the race, they will run the race without my spirit. <laughs> you cannot have my spirit. Humans are lawless. This is the word of God. Genesis 6, 3. The, then the Lord said, my spirit will not strive with humans for they all are <laughs> flesh. So the disease poisoned flesh exposed skin of Cain, which made him have to cover himself and hide out in caves. This is where you get cavemen from. Genesis 6 is saying Cain started having babies and it says that when the children of the, when the children of humans increased on the earth and daughters were born to them, then it was sons and daughters of these fair-skinned people with exposed flesh the exposed white meat, all of us have white meat under our dark skin. The Europeans just have no melatonin, can an Ethi have no Ethiopian onyx kush skin to cover their flesh white meat. That's what separates. And so is a European whose flesh is exposed do they come from a different branch? No. They come from the same womb, but because of their worship, God says you're outcast like your father because your spirit and your faith is outcast. So that's what makes you a different seed. Can they ever be superior? No. This is why he said every nation, kindred, tongue, and people who came from Adam and Eve, which is Cush, is Kush one drop rule? There ain't no Europeans, there ain't no Mongolians. Yo, the varying degrees of your exposure of your flesh, or the varying degrees of the Egyptian skin that you have covering your flesh, that determines whether you're Kush or fair skin. What, no, whether you're dark or fair skin, everybody came from Kush. Everybody came from a Nubian. And unless you honor the birthright of the Nubian king and queen, Adam and Eve, you have no heritage in heaven or on earth. So you have no courts, you have no constitution. You have no bank, you have no money. You have no law, you have no governors. You have no heads of state. You have no kings, you have no queens. You vagabonds like Cain was, unless you accept this redemption, this cleansing. You got to go through us and you got to humble yourself and follow the script or prepare for destruction. However you want it, we good with it. My spirit will not strive with humans, for they are flesh. Yet his days shall be numbered, and he will not live more than 120 years. Adam and Eve lived 900 years. Listen, human beings have a cap on your life. And each generation that you compound the lawlessness of human beings, now human beings barely live 75 years. When you go back to the divine lifestyle, you will supersede 120 years. There is no cap on your lifespan when you go back to the, life, the divine lifestyle. They know it. 
We know it. The only person who don't know it is you. Let he that hath ear, let him hear what the truth is about divine and human. Now you can, you can claim your civil rights, you humans, if you want to. Or you could come get these birth birthrights back. You choose. 